Welcome to the programme. And as is usual on the first Monday of the month, we have the Older Women's Network. And sitting right in front of me are two of the ladies from that organisation. Can I introduce Nell Fitzpatrick, who is on my far left, and Hazel Abdullah, who is in the centre. Good afternoon, ladies. Now, you have something that you want to talk seriously about today. I think it's, it could be very, very interesting. <coughs> well, Hazel, I'm going to... How are you? You're very well. Oh, <laughs> Where did you get that exotic name from? You didn't get it in Kerry, man. Which, Abdullah? Yes, it's beautiful. Well, people... Lovely. When I say Abdullah now, people sort of go, oh, huh? And I say, well, it's going to be... Soon it's going to be a traditional Irish name. <laughs> so many people coming into the country. But um, that was my husband. My, um, I met him... He was a medical student, and I was a student nurse. And um, it was very exciting. He was, he, his background was Asian, African, and he was from Rhodesia at the time. And um, anyway, we got married, and you fell in love and got married. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were young. What? Oh, I was young. That's what you do when you're young. Yes. <laughs> Which we all do. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, and then we, we went out to Rhodesia. And, uh, oh, quite a different... Just tell me, what was it like in Rhodesia? Smith was there at the time, wasn't he? Yes, Smith, and they had just got the... Um, they just sort of changed. Right. And uh, then you had all the sanctions and all the things. Ah, loads of kind different things. Kind of a turmoil, things. was it? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I was very racist at the time, and because my husband wasn't white, I um, had lots of problems from the white people. They were very nasty to me. In what way? Oh, the things they said. Very rude. The fact also and that you were that Irish. Uh, well, that no, fact. it was only because I was white and not married to a white person. But... When I looked at that and I thought, but this is very familiar, because when I was here, it was the Protestant Catholic thing. And it was a very similar thing. You just sort of, because somebody is something, you just sort of say bad things to them. Well, a Catholic didn't marry a Protestant. Is that what you're saying? A Protestant didn't marry a Catholic? Well, here. yes, they did, because my father did. My father, because I'm Church of Ireland, mm -hmm. and uh, my father... Married a Catholic woman. Well, could you see a relation between both uh, cultures, between the, the Africans and the Irish, as regards the, the uh, religion and the colour? The religion didn't make any difference. No, but what, the way you were saying um, that, but no, the but the, 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 the same, sort of yeah. things that the, the white people said to me and said to the black people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had the same, similar kind of thing. So I got on very well with it. I managed to cope. And you were <coughs> with it, and then of course there was the Asian thing because my husband was a Muslim, so going back there, it was Salisbury at the time. Now it's Zimbabwe, and uh, Harare, and um, he, you know, his family were, you know, the Asian connections. So and how did how did they receive you? Well, they weren't that keen. <laughs> like, yeah, but you've, so you've, got to, you've got to jump that hurdle. Oh, indeed, yes, I managed to cope. And um, well, it was tell, quite experience. Just tell me in, in a very few words how you coped, because it couldn't have been easy. Well, you, were, you were young, I'd say, and you were in love, and everything was new, new country, new hope, new everything. And here you were with all these barriers. How did you cope, Hazel? Well, it was difficult, and because of... Um, out, out there, women were sort of put down, same as they were here. They didn't seem to have the rights. And when I, when I wanted to open, and I got a job and I wanted to open a bank account, I couldn't open it without him having his name in there and signing. And the same kind of thing, I think, was here. Ah, uh, well, not to, the, not to the same extent. Uh, I don't know. I think we were easier. But I wouldn't say it was that drastic. But anyway, you were in a different culture. Everything was so different, even the food. But everything was was different in the the culture. Yeah. And being with the um, with the Asian with the Muslim. Um, How did they receive you? Did they welcome you in, or did they? 
Well, it was a bit difficult for them because I wouldn't change my my clothes, you know, because they would, oh. you know, the Muslim women um, wearing skirts and trousers underneath, and I refused to do that. I never wore trousers when I was over there. I just wore skirts. What well, fair play And um, but it was a problem because uh, if I wanted to go to a hairdresser, um, I could go in the front door, but a non-white person could only go in the back door after hours. Oh, there was lots of that. And restaurants, um, wh- well, white pe- people could go in the front door, mm-hmm. but um, in some restaurants they wouldn't have you if you were not, depending on the colour of your skin, how dark you were. There was <coughs> lots so you were more or less graded, uh, you know, uh, well, your skin s- spoke for you. Oh, out there, yes. Yeah, so that yeah. was it. That was your, that was your passport to Well, lots yes, of there yes. was a lot the of, of skin. things like yeah. that, yeah. And it was a bit sad, really, the way. But then again, they couldn't do anything much to me because I was white. Right. Yeah. The fact that uh, I'm interested to know that the fact that you were Irish, uh, did that have any side effects? Or did they, were you ever asked about your country or how, what it was like in Ireland, how we lived or the situation? No, not really. But... Um, talking about Irish, people, uh, a lot of the, the coloured people going to school, um, when they're talking about their teachers, um, it always seemed that the, the teacher that was really nice to them, a lot of the teachers went, they were racist, uh, they, they were Irish. Mm-hmm. It was amazing, mm-hmm. and, and everybody talking like that. Mm-hmm. The, the, the Irish were, very f- were friendly people. Yeah, and it's our nature. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they were popular, and they did treat people in a much better way could I than others. Could I interject there, ladies? Mm. Um, you, uh, with all due respect, Hazel, you're kind of glossing it over a bit. There was an actual form of apartheid there, wasn't it? Obviously, because the way they treated you on your initial entry into the country. No, it wasn't official like in South Africa. Oh, no, I accept that. So that's that. why they did it. You didn't know the restaurant. Mm-hmm. That you, um, you know, a mixed group of people went into. Yes, of course. And they, they might, um, someone who was a bit, you'd have a, maybe two brothers, mm-hmm. and one is slightly darker than the other. Yes. So one would be allowed in, and the other one wouldn't. But there was that discrimination all the way along the line, wasn't there? Yes, but uh, apartheid, it wasn't apartheid like South Africa. No, I accept that. Uh, you see, in South Africa, it was official. Yes, of course. And it wasn't in, in uh, Rhodesia, it wasn't official. But when you first went to, to Rhodesia, as it was then, mm-hmm. I mean, it was a prosperous country. I mean, the main, the main uh, uh, source of income for the country was tobacco, if I remember correctly. And it was a fairly uh, wealthy country. Um, no, I'm not saying that the wealth went down through the system and everybody was living very well, but it was a wealthy country during the time of Smith. Well, it was for the few people on the top. Well, it's like everything else. <laughs> not, for the ma- not for the majority <coughs> not of for people. The majority. I accept no. that one. But like, uh, was the preferential treatment being given to you because you were white and the, 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 the local res- the, the residents other than that were objecting to it? Well, they didn't because it was very bad to be married to a non-white. Well, of course, there's always been that in all sorts of places. Yeah. As, as, as Nell mentioned, that even happened here from a religious point of view. Yeah. But I wouldn't have thought like it was anything like the, the difference between uh, yeah. uh, Africa and, and, and Europe, you know. I mean, that was really held in, people were really kept apart from that point of view. The other thing I'd, I'd like to ask you is this. I mean, you went, did you go to work in a hospital or did you go to go into private practice? No, I, no, I didn't, um, I wasn't allowed. You weren't allowed? No. And the reason why you uh, you were you were a fully trained nurse, I assume, when you went into the into the uh, country at that stage. Ah uh, yes, but I didn't. I because I had a child, a oh, small oh. child. Yes, I didn't really want to. Yes. So um, I did. Um, I worked as a receptionist uh-huh. for physiotherapy uh-huh. and that's very good. Mm. and that sort of um, X-rays <coughs> and things like that. So it, uh, that actually helped me to settle in. Yes. Because. Be meeting different people. Yes, who was a good hairdresser and whatnot, you yes, know, for the, you they were white move into the and that, so that, that was very good. So in, well, a, no. in, effect, in effect, what you're saying to me really is because of the regulation that applied there, you were kind of put in another level. Well, you see, that was difficult for them because I was white, you see, so they, they couldn't do 
they had to say things, but they couldn't physically actually do them. So, yes, of course. Yeah. So it, uh, no, the thing is, I'm a person that um, I try and have a decent life, mm -hmm. and I like I'm friendly and you make yeah, I like way, to have a laugh, yeah. and yeah. you know, I managed, I coped. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask. Thing. Sorry, so I'm going to ask you something very basic. How about the food, Hazel, when you went out there? How did you find food in in Indonesia? Oh my goodness me! What a shock! When I went out, because living in the other culture, and you know we had potatoes every day, and they didn't. They'd have their um, curry with a bit of potato in it, but they wouldn't certainly have our they thing. Have a steak <laughs> so, or ham or bacon. Not the way we did it, no. And um, they didn't have the same vegetables that we had. Like cauliflower, cabbages, uh, broccoli, celery, celery. And, and that sort of thing. They had all different ones. And what were they so, like? Um, what were the vegetables like? Well, it was very nice, but you wish for your own thing. So when I, sometimes when we were um, out, well, in people's houses or whatever, i try and fish out the potatoes out of the, <laughs> out of the curry and one, and they sort of say, well, why aren't you having the meat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'd have to sort of say, well, I like potato. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> You were reared on them. <laughs> yes. were reared on them. <laughs> and Stable the, diet. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> the fruit. You know, our fruit is um, is sort of uh, got a tang in it, mm. and so you put sugar in, and you can make a pie, a tart, and all that, and it's got that lovely flavour. Now out there, the fruit was all sweet, mm. so you know, so I couldn't do the cooking that I was used to doing because the things were not the same. <laughs> had to manipulate things, and you had to kind of change your whole attitude to cooking, had you? Yes, I had to learn how. You see, the thing is, just because they don't have what I had, you know, I um, would find out. How do you do it? And I'd ask different people how they cook that. And then I'd be able to say, ah, oh, I can do it that way. Mm. And it wouldn't be the same as, as here, but be, you know, a bit more It'd similar. A good try. And um, so I, I got some pretty good recipes. Good. You never poisoned your husband, like? No. You never <laughs> well, you never asked him. <laughs> no, but you see, we had to do. I had to learn a bit of his, uh -huh. of course. And then I had to have some of mine. Yes, of course. And then we had the in between. Yeah. Well, one so thing I'd like to ask you, if you don't mind me, if I say it again, um, were you there in the transition to to Mugabe's government? Yeah. Yeah. And what difference did that made make initially to to your circumstances? It, well, it it um, did make a difference. In what way? Um, Ah, slowly, because there wasn't the, the same racism. Well, uh, initially, when, he did, when Mugabe got, came into power, he promised all sorts of things. He That's promised right. no, no, no difference in the, in the population. But, I mean, things went, as yeah. you know, radically wrong in the, in, the, in the interim. I mean, it's a completely different place. Now you'd be terrified to go to it. But at that time, it didn't make any difference to you as, as a white person, did it? No, it just turned around. But the, the thing is, because I'm a very friendly person, um, I got on with all the races, mm -hmm. and I mean, sometimes I'd be the only white person in a huge, big, you know, with, with hundreds of black people, mm -hmm. and you know, people would come and talk to me, well, and what I was comfortable. Ask you a question and on that. that: How would you find just being the only white person? Not a bother. Really? Yeah. You wouldn't find it intimidating. Not at all, because people would always because I smile and I'm, you know, happy person. Somebody will come up and um, help me mm -hmm. and make sure I'm okay, make sure I have a seat and make sure I have a cup of tea and all that kind of thing. You know, the people are you good. You sound as if you certainly worked at it, worked at integrating yourself into the society that you went to live in. Oh, yeah. I actually, I really enjoyed. Once the first little bit got mm, over, got over yeah. then um, it didn't matter because I'm... I will ask somebody how they cope with their, you know, culture, how they mm. do it, and I will, you know, be comfortable then mm -hmm. trying to fit in. Well, did you make friends? And would you have women friends now out there? Would you have a night out with your women friends? Would you go to the theatre mm, or that type, as we do here? Not so much. A meal and a few there there wouldn't have been the same things.